what would just be something a person should know about a diamond as far as purchasing it, what to look for, and is there anything that they should want to look for in a diamond or it just doesn't matter? So, I mean, everything is really personal preference, but I will say a misconception that people have about diamonds is Kenny Green, raw perspective, concrete and steel, keeping it good and raw. Today, I'd like to introduce my people to my man, John, professional diamond setter, set with some of the most elite, Harry Winston, different jewelers, keeping it real private. And also, Elise, a grader, a gem grader. She decides what stones are labeled and why they're labeled that way far as grading. Also, I like to talk about the natural diamond and the man-made diamond. And I got a professional to explain and drop it. Kenny Green, check it out. How can you tell the difference between an earth stone and a lab, a natural and a lab? Testing at the labs. It's, um, wow. you cannot, like with the loop, you can't distinguish lab grown. The only way you would be able to tell if it's a lab grown with the loop is looking at the girdle for the inscription. If it's been certified by GIA, they'll have a laser inscription on the girdle that's super, super tiny. You can only really see with this right. and it'll say lab grown. Other so than that, that. that that's different. GIA is actually certifying lab diamonds mm -hmm. people gia that certifies the diamonds they are certifying the lab diamonds as well and that's very interesting because it's a diamond the lab diamond is a diamond so if, and for argument's sake for y'all to understand one is created in the earth and one is created in the lab but they are the same it's just the origin of it. That's let's say that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So lab grown, I think it takes anywhere from four to six weeks to create a lab grown diamond, and it's Any the size? same. Mm -hmm. wow. It's the same chemical composition as a diamond. It's made out of carbon so. under high temperature and high pressure. So we mimic the conditions in the earth for lab grown diamonds. Um, and lab grown diamonds tend to generally have like a nicer clarity and a higher color because it's something that we can control. So we make everything in house. There's nothing that goes outside this office. This is the first and last place that the, the idea starts here and the finished piece leaves from here. deal with more of the people that actually make jewelry. Right. The jewelers that actually make it. You'll get much, much better product and you'll be completely happy with it at the end of the day. And see, usually you don't get behind the scenes of the man at work. Right now, we're in his office. This is where it goes down. These machines, what he works with. Look at those hands at work. What are you setting there? This is a three star ring that we made in pink gold. And it was a handmade ring. These are pink sapphires. A misconception that people have about diamonds is that they're indestructible. They're not indestructible. They have a really high resistance to scratching, and that's what people talk about with the, oh, they're a 10 on the hardness scale, mm. but they're not very tough. So toughness is the resistance to cracking and breaking. So even though diamond is the hardest and the only thing that can scratch diamond is diamond, they can still break and have fractures and cavities and okay. things like that. So um, people tend to be very hard on their jewelry. Y'all know me, Kenny Green, keeping it good and raw. Wanted to give you something different to look at. Uh, some information, some knowledge from the people behind the scenes. 
So when you see these rings, the diamonds that are set, the people that determine what exactly the grade and the color is, here's Elise <laughs> and here's John. Concrete and steel. 